connected this morning uh, in this time of worship. Uh, Mount Vernon United Methodist Church. I'm Rev Pack, and uh, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Sean for being here, being our videographer today. Is Mr. Kurt is on vacation. We have several uh, people uh, either on vacation or headed there, and, and maybe you're on vacation somewhere. I'd like to know that. I, if you're at the beach, uh, sitting out on the beach with your toes in the sand and watching me preach, I'd like to be able to say that, that you that you are uh, inclined enough to. Sit on the beach with your toes in the sand and, and watch worship and be worshiping, praising God. I know that's one of the places that when I get there and I can't see beyond the horizon and I realize that God is much bigger than me. So, so we're glad that you have connected and joined with us uh, today. So uh, as the Spirit connects and brings us together, pray with me. Only God, we thank you and we praise you this day. Lord, as we now connect together to worship the praise you so we come and we invite you to come come now and pour your holy spirit out on each and every one of us as we gather together to praise you lord lead and guide us with your wisdom as we comfort now in the warmth of your love in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. we're going to sing another what we're singing now i stand amazed in the present and amazed Saying, you know, to me, 
uh, this is what we need to do. Little did I know we were going to have weeks and months in, in order to, to be still, to be still and to know that God is still in control. One of my mentors just told me yesterday, said, uh, in the scheme of it all, it's, the truth is we're not yet in control. God is in control. So when we come back together, I'm saying that we're going to relaunch. Things are going to be different in our midweek life. We put some God uh, lines in there and stuff. Bring your own mask. Bring your own hand sanitizer. Uh, cool. <laughs> I guess that meant hurry. Right, uh, but, but bring that. And we are going to, uh, there will be no cafe uh, as we have normally done. And I know, I know, I know I'm going to miss it too. And all that. we'll be using the door coming through the stairwell. We'll have the kitchen locked off uh, so, so people can't just huddle up and gather up. That would be a place. And, and the, uh, the main doors to the building coming in. And then we're going to have to continue this six-foot social distancing. That word wasn't in that old cabinet last year, uh, but it is now. And we've got to do that. If you feel like you need a mask, want to wear a mask and all, that's entirely up to you. If you're one of those people that said, I haven't worn a mask yet, I'm not going to, uh, you're going to leave it up to the doctors and the professionals to do that. Uh, that's understandable. But uh, some of the rest of us, we've used one time, you, you know, to, to cover up and, and, and all. That's perfectly uh, fine. The uh, upholstery chairs will not be in here. Uh, we will be using the, the uh, chairs we normally use in the dining area so that we can spray them with Clorox solution, the sanitizer solution, uh, without damaging the upholstery. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll do that before and after each worship time. 9 o'clock, we'll be here in the Family Life Center. 11 o'clock, we'll be here in the Family Life Center. The time between those two worships will be time to wipe down, disinfect, and all that. If you want to be part of that team, to, to disinfect, uh, uh, come on and, and let me know that you want to do that. So, so as we relaunch, as we come back, uh, you know, hopefully that we can do this in a way that, that, uh, that we come back in uh, feeling closer uh, to, to God in our relationship, our walk with God, and we just don't certainly take for granted the freedom that we've had uh, to, to be able to get up and come and, and be in the worship, but, but let's do it as safe as we know how. In the way of some of our prayer concerns, and, and thanks to, to the many of you who joined me on Wednesday at 4 o'clock for table time and, and have uh, encouraged and let me know uh, about some prayer concerns. Uh, it, it's a little bit uh, harder to, to do it now, but you, you're certainly welcome to text or uh, email me or something. Uh, my phone number is 706-224-0775. That's 224-0775. Should you want to text me? Uh, everybody else in the world's got that number already. So uh, if I don't answer, it's because I don't know you. I think you're a bill collector. No, not really. But uh, just, just shoot me a text, and I'll, you've got a prayer concern name. Uh, Erica Amon uh, and uh, is continuing to go through a time of chemo uh, treatment. Robin Klinger is a Diver Brewster's sister, and Miss Robin's been here with us some and all, but she's been through chemo, and she needs more. And here's my thought when, I, when I'm told that it's not working the way that they were hoping it was. My thought is we need to pray bigger. Amen. We need to pray bigger. Let's, let's pray bigger. Let's all pray bigger. Uh, Robin, uh, you may be watching, but, but just know that we're going to pray even bigger for you. Gary Archer is uh, Indiana. It's the uh, uh, Mr. Paul Walker's stepfather, but he's been, what, like 80 days now? He's been on that. It's, it's Rick's grandpa. So, so like 80 days now that he's been on a ventilator. And, and uh, uh, Miss Nita Harvest has followed. Marianne Norton, the, the sister of Martha Clements, is now in hospice care in, in Florida. And uh, Ross uh, Clements that has a, a sore on his leg. He's had to go to one wound doctor where they removed the cancer. But uh, we pray for healing. Miss Elva Holmes that had surgery and then had to go back to the hospital. Uh, to, to get some, some adjusting done to, to uh, get over the uh, uh, surgery that she had had. And then uh, Miss Donna Combs, the sister, Shirley Grant Ellis, uh, had died this past week. So, so these are some names that I have 
uh, that, I, that I can share with you. I have some other names and concerns, and y'all know who I'm talking about, that, that I have not been given the liberty uh, to, to uh, openly share. All of us have some struggles. Every one of us have some struggles. Uh, we just don't want to mention it. As a matter of fact, in my family, we claim we put the word fun and dysfunctional. All families seem to think that they're a little bit dysfunctional. I, I think that's uh, true, that, that none of us are completely ideal, the perfect family. So we all need God. We all need to, to, to pray and, and to have God. So, so come with me now as we first pray in silence. Humbly and earnestly, awesome God, as we seek you and all we say and all we do. And Lord, we just have to admit that we're just bursting, bursting with the excitement of the opportunities now that as we grow so close to, to the time that we can begin to, to relaunch this, your faith community, this, your church, Lord, as we come, but still we have to under new guidelines and restrictions and and doing things uh, new and hopefully better. And God, that, that we can spend this time uh, each and every week uh, together worshiping, praising, growing, and learning and understanding more. Not only about you, but our place. Uh, finding our own niche and being able to, to do what it is that you need us to do. God, we come. We come, God, seeking you as the healer. Lord, we pray that you hold your healing hands upon these who are now in a time of rehabilitation and, and regaining their strength and overcoming surgeries. God, we ask you to be with those who are undergoing uh, uh, treatments. Lord, we particularly ask you to be with, with Erica. If, if she goes into yet another phase, it's, it's going to be a little harder than, than where she's been. But continue to give her strength, Lord, just be with God. I, I know it, it gets uh, frustrating, God, but just, just continue to, to let her feel your mighty presence with her. And God, for, the, for those who now, Miss Donna, uh, she's uh, had a sister to die, God, just wrap her in your everlasting arms. Lord, be with all of us that is be a struggle. As we struggle together, God, in so many various different ways, but Lord, as we talked last week about your omnipresence, that you're always with us, loving us, forgiving us, encouraging us. Lord, come, come now. Come and reach now. Reach down to each and every one of us, God, as we now feel your very presence, the power of your spirit of flowing in and through and pouring out of all of us, God, that those around us, too, will come to know your love, your love and your forgiveness for, for each and every one of us, God, we ask you these and all things. In the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Mr. Thompson comes saying that before he does, Mr. Sean wants to share with us that we have an upcoming opportunity, especially for our young families. Uh, Mr. Sean, you want to share that with us now? Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. I uh, just wanted to do that official invite. Uh, you know, we have the uh, the retreat coming up, uh, the cabins of Copper Hill. Uh, we've got some spots available and would really like for you to consider that. That's going to be a fun retreat. We'll be leaving here July 24th around 3 uh, and we'll be coming back Sunday. If you can't make it up, you don't have to be here at 3, you can come up later that day, but it's just going to be a fun time where we can all get together and hang out. There'll be fishing, kayaking, uh, just a lot of different things. Um, there's a zip lining, rope course uh, that we can do uh, and, uh, together and just have some quality time together. Uh, really pray about it, think about it. Uh, we'd love to, uh, to be able to fill all the cabins. Um, we have AC, and I, I'm all about some AC, uh, but um, pray about it, talk about it uh, with your family, and um, if it's something that God puts on your heart, we would love to have you 
please. Um, we have this week uh, kind of to uh, fill the remaining sl slots. You can contact me or Ms. Trenda. It's in the midweek life. Um, so I uh, hope to see you there. Have a blessed day. Take some more. Oh, it's
a sheep among wolves. Therefore be wise as snakes and innocent as doves. Watch out for people because they will hand you over to councils and they will beat you in their synagogue. May God add to us now, not only this reading and hearing, but also some understanding of this. It's the Holy Spirit, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, for you are the potter, and I am the clay. Amen. Uh, look at this, and you might start saying, well, uh, last week we were talking about the Great Commission of how Jesus was needing to send uh, people out. So now we look here and he actually gives the part I skipped over is a lot of actual instructions to those uh, going out. And if you feel like you're one of those, and, and when you're reading this uh, at the end of the ninth chapter, starting at verse 35, into the middle of the tenth chapter, you may want to read all of those de details. But, but for what I was going to accomplish here in, in our short time together, uh, as we're, we're looking at this, that, that we see here, uh, and it sounds almost like we're in a zoology class. Uh, that does to me, uh, anyhow. But he's telling them that I'm going to send you out. I'm going to send you out and give them all these instructions and so forth. But then he says, be aware. Beware. He said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Now, go back to the very beginning of what we were, were looking at. Is where he's literally saying that, that, that he's out and he's among and he sees these people and he says he has compassion on them. He, he has, takes compassion on these people because they were wandering around like sheep without a shepherd. Now, I realize a lot of us uh, may not know a whole lot about sheep. We may not know anything about sheep. Quite often when uh, I'm headed somewhere, or I and I call them, I said, I'm headed that way. I'll be there in 30 shakes of a lamb's tail. And, and people say, oh, okay. You know, most people don't realize a lamb don't have a tail. You, you know, in, in, in looking at this, sometimes uh, what Jesus was talking about and who he was talking about, and they knew a great deal about shepherd. Uh, uh, probably very few of us now know much at all about shepherding. I know a little bit about herding. Uh, about 22 years of my life, uh, I was on the dairy. Uh, and, and on the dairy, I was a herdsman. And, and, and I knew about cow herding. Uh, but that's somewhat different from shepherding. Uh, cow herding and shepherding is somewhat different. But still, yeah, you know, we were working with, with animals. And, and quite often, I would tell people that, that God came along one day and said, Oh, Jack, you done so good with all these old cows. I'm going to switch you over to a few of my sheep and a couple of goats. Well, I've had to add that recently. You know, they always seem to wander in, don't they? And Jesus did use a lot of these illustrations that were proper in his time. And I'm pointing out now that a lot of us don't know a lot about shepherding as far as what he's talking about. And especially when we get to this part where he says, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. You see, the wolves were predators. They were predators to these sheep. And now he said, I'm sending you out. But then he goes on a little further and he tells them, you know, that you need to be wise. Wise as snakes. That means to be savvy, to understand, uh, you know, where you need to be and when and, and when, when it's time to curl up, when it's time to strike back. Uh, so forth, to be, to be savvy in this, uh, that, that you're doing it. And, and then, peaceful as doves. And when we use the word dove in church, more times than not, we're thinking of receiving the Spirit of God. That we open ourselves up and let God empower us. That when we're in these places and times, that if we're really truly tuned in, some of you may remember the old days of, of having to tune your radio and to get it right on the station. But when we're tuned in, uh, obviously we didn't have digital numbers, you could just punch up. So, so tuned in to, to get right where we need to be in our lives with God, that we let God be the shepherd. 
We, we let Jesus be the shepherd in our life. Remember that little shepherd boy, David, who became king? I mentioned him occasionally to you. Uh, who, who became the greatest king of all for Israel up until Jesus. Up until Jesus became king of kings. And, well, the truth of it was, now Jesus is sending out these disciples to be messengers. He's sending them out to, to, to literally be uh, sharing the good news. The good news that Christ has come. Christ has come that, that all of us might be saved to accept this love and this forgiveness of God. That we can be led into this one big flock of, of, of all being God's children. Uh, saved by the grace of God. However, pray. He said, pray for God to send workers. So he's telling these very first disciples, you're not going to be able to handle it all by yourself. I got news for you. I got news for you. I can't handle it all by myself. Matter of fact, I can't handle much at all by myself. I'm extremely dependent on you. On all the, and I, I believe everybody in any church anywhere today, I believe we're all in ministry. Every one of us are in ministry. God has called us all to be in ministry. Now, you might be a teacher. You might be a nurse. You might be a teller at the bank. You might be whatever, even a car salesman. Uh, and whatever it is that God has given you the talents and the skills and, and, the, and the gifts and the resources to do. And everything we do and say, we should do that in a way that it would be pleasing to God. That we can share the good news. There's opportunities everywhere in all of our life that we can share the love of God. We can share the good news of God in all kinds of places. There was a story of a guy who, who was going with St. Francis. He was going to learn to be a minister. He was going to learn to preach and so forth and all of that. And they went out. And they spent the whole day. And, and they found somebody here who needed some assistance with, with, with this. And then later somebody else who needs a, a little assistance with that and so forth. And they spent the whole day. And finally, uh, St. Francis said, well, I, I think it's time for us to return home. And, and the, the young guy who was with him said, St. Francis, I, I thought you were going to teach me how to minister. And he said, oh, he said, we have. We have ministered all day. St. Francis is also the one who said, preach all the time, but use words only when necessary. It's literally and truly our actions and what we do when we see or know someone's in need, when someone needs a, a little encouragement, a, a, a little attaboy, attaboy, or a pat on the back and say, we're going to get through this too. Uh, you know, we've all been in times, uncharted waters, uh, uncertain, whatever, however you want to describe it. It's going to be interesting a few years from now how we look back and describe, you know, what we've really come through. But hopefully it's been a time for us to where we could be wise as snakes and peaceful as doves. That, that in this we can maybe find out more about ourselves and our relationship, our ongoing relationship with God, and that we come out of this more ready than ever to, to be those who are in ministry, in ministry for God, so that we can share that love of God. And in places where maybe we once might have been negative, that all of a sudden we realize that's not going to benefit the kingdom. When we turn to Matthew, when we open the Gospel of Matthew, you need to understand, his main thing is about the kingdom. Again and again and again. You see, he had that. He had that coming from, from the Hebrew nation and, and knowing that he was really writing to, to those who were from that, that, that their kingdom, that they think kingdom. So, so as we think about who we are and what God is giving us and in the place and time where we are, how can we help you know, not only receive this spirit of God, but let it pour out from us. Whistle time. Remember that word? That we can let it pour out from us and that we can share 
the good news of God's love and God's grace that remains sufficient for us all. Pray with me. Um, that God now as we open our hearts and our minds, Lord, as we uh, pour ourselves out for you. Lord, we receive you. We receive you, Lord, with anticipation of a time that, that we uh, not only can continue this live broadcast for, for the many that are, that are not right here or not feeling safe to, to come back, but also a time that, that we can uh, open the doors back up of this campus, Lord, and we can relaunch th this ministry, uh, you know, like never ever before, God, we realize that we're, we're now in a new place and time, and God, we want to be all that we truly can be for you. Pour your spirit, pour your spirit out on each and every one of us, God, and help us never ever to pass up an opportunity to share, to share the good news of your love and your grace for us. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, get your hand on that and turn with us. I think